through the month of December, I asked you to vote for the top 10 movies of 2012, and a number of you asked me for my list as well. And like for most of you, putting together such a list was a tall order, as 2012 was not only a good year for movies entertainment-wise, but also in terms of boundaries and box office records being broken. I took all that into account when making my own top 10 list. Let's get started. Number 10 is Les Miserables. Now, as many of you know, I had a tough time with this movie. Not only couldn't I pronounce any of the names, but I really hate singing. That said, there isn't a person on earth who can deny that Anne Hathaway nailed her rendition of I Dreamed a Dream, perhaps the most memorable musical number on film since Somewhere Over the Rainbow. And fittingly, Hathaway does look an awful lot like Judy Garland and her daughter Liza Minnelli. I also have to give it up for director Tom Hooper, who has raised the bar for movie musicals by having his actors sing live on set, making the genre come closer than ever to its onstage roots. For number nine, I'm going to have to agree with the Hollywood Foreign Press Association that Salmon Fishing in the Yemen is one of the year's best. Some might have been surprised to see the Golden Globes nominate this spring flick for Best Musical or Comedy, as well as Actor and Supporting Actress, but I felt this was a movie where everything clicked. It features Ewan McGregor, Emily Blunt, Lassie Hallstrom, and, for that matter, the UK film industry at their absolute best. At number eight, I've got Argo. It's been a pleasant surprise watching Ben Affleck not only turn his career around, but become one of the hottest directors in Tinseltown. His confidence in portraying this recently declassified top-secret mission couldn't be more clear, and he is truly a generous collaborator with his co-stars, most notably Alan Arkin, who he gives one of the best roles of Arkin's career. Okay, now get ready to be a little upset with me, Nolanites. I put The Dark Knight Rises at number seven. I'm sorry, but I just can't overlook the fact that this film falls apart under even the slightest scrutiny. But despite all its plot holes, the ideas that Nolan puts forward are so compelling, from his version of Catwoman and Robin to the true legacy of Batman, that I still have a lot of respect for this final chapter of the Dark Knight trilogy. Here's hoping that instead of just trying to mindlessly copy Nolan's superhero movie blueprint, Hollywood will realize that the true secret ingredient here is respect for the source material. First time live action director and Pixar wonder kid Andrew Stanton also clearly has respect for his source material, if not an understanding of how to make a cost effective blockbuster, but unfortunately Disney's marketing team didn't have any respect for audiences. The result is one of the most underrated and underwatched movies of the year. Taylor Kitsch exudes real star power, and Lynn Collins is the most likable space princess since Carrie Fisher. I've seen it twice, once on IMAX and again on DVD, and it holds up. I would love to return to Barsoom. Too bad Disney f***ed it up. A lot of great animated movies came out in 2012, but the only one that made it onto my list at number five is The Lorax. Sure, I really enjoyed Wreck-It Ralph and Hotel Transylvania, but none can compete with the strong message behind Illumination Entertainment's The Lorax. The high point of the film is the song How Bad Can I Be, which captures the mentality of corporate greed with impressive clarity and panache. Here's hoping it gets a much-deserved nod for best song. Then at number four, I've put The Impossible. That's right, two Ewan McGregor films are on this list, and I'm becoming a real fan of the actor and his career choices as of late. But I'm also blown away by director J.A. Bayona's talent, and I'm hoping that this disaster flick, which radiates danger with impressive simplicity, will be a launching pad for his career. Number three, that would be Django Unchained, a film that tries to be many different things and I feel succeeds at most of its goals. As he did with the Holocaust, Quentin Tarantino is forcing Hollywood and audiences to push past merely addressing the horrors of history to witnessing them, with a level of honesty that's rare not just in film, but in everything today, from pop culture to the news. So what's my runner-up best film of the year? Lincoln, which I've been singing the praises of loudly ever since I walked into a press screening with very low expectations. True, this film has proven not to be for everyone, but it's perhaps one of the best American history films ever made, and certainly the best and most real portrayal of Abraham Lincoln. But I found that Lincoln was about more than just American history. It's also a fascinating look at what it takes to actually get things done in the world, a lesson that applies beyond politics to life in general. Finally, as I'm sure you've guessed by now, my number one film of the year is The Avengers. I've chosen it for several reasons. First and foremost, because it was simply my best movie-going experience of the year. I saw it twice in theaters, both times in 3D, and I not only got to finally experience the joys of reading a comic book on the big screen, but I got to share that experience with others. To have non-comic book readers begin to realize why adults enjoy reading comics every week was incredibly exciting and rewarding. And while I enjoy a dark, serious film as much as anyone, The Avengers prove that lighter and more fun fare continues to be the sweet spot at the Cineplex. Just look at the top five grossing films of all time. The darkest one is the final Harry Potter flick, and we all know that's not that dark. 
And for all you naysayers out there, remember that light and fun movies can still have a lot of depth and perhaps more importantly, heart. See why I'm concerned about Man of Steel? Not because I think it won't be good, but because I'm worried it won't live up to its potential, both creatively and commercially. So those are my top 10 movies of 2012. Be sure to share your own lists down below and your thoughts on dark versus light movies. I'm Grace Randolph and this has been a Movie Bite. You can watch more right now.